In early December 2019, I wrote a report on Iranian missile proliferation in Iraq. One of the conclusions that I found in this report was that these rockets were actually flying. We had over 30 rocket attacks from Iran-backed militias hitting uh, Iraqi bases, hosting U.S. personnel, as well as U.S. diplomatic facilities and American businesses. While the issue had been uh, addressed by U.S. officials, counterproliferation policy was largely ineffective at the time. I took a systems approach to assessing the question of what does success look like for artificial intelligence in national security in 2018. There are many components uh, in national security that are immature and that have been underinvested in, particularly on the IT modernization and the workforce. Even if we do overcome these technical hurdles, the ecosystem is not mature enough to really leverage the capability gains of artificial intelligence. The idea of creating a separate military service for space is something that's actually been kicked around and studied for several decades, going back at least into the 1990s. But really, when we got focused on it here at CSIS was in 2017, when two members in the House of Representatives put a proposal on the table to create a separate military service. So we started looking at this issue. By 2018, I started to realize, you know what, the time is now. This is an urgent need to reorganize so that we can focus on what's going on in the space domain. I wrote the report in early December, and a few weeks after that, an Iran-backed militia, Qatayb Hezbollah, launched a large salvo of rockets, about 30 rockets, uh, targeting a base in northern Iraq. This attack killed a U.S. contractor and injured uh, four American personnel as well as two Iraqi police officers. The attack on December 27th involving 30 rockets took me by surprise just because of the sheer quantity. So while there's a lot of areas of risk for U.S. policy in the Middle East, I found this to be particularly uh, threatening. I think over the course of, say, 2018 to 2019, there's really been an evolution of the language that we in D.C. And, and the broader community that we use when we talk about artificial intelligence. While we did not invent the phrase ecosystem, it's been pretty cool to see that framing of this system appear in other writing. Fundamentally, this is about the Department of Defense becoming a digital organization, and we're starting to see the attention placed where it needs to be. In 2018, President Trump uh, came out publicly and started discussing the idea, and then our work kept picking up here, uh, looking into this issue. DOD actually came out with its formal proposal to create a space force. You know, it really culminated in December of 2019 when the president signed into law the National Defense Authorization Act that included the space force legislation, and so the space force was born. So following the U.S. assassination of uh, Iranian General Qasem Soleimani and then the retaliation from Iran launching over 15 ballistic missiles at U.S. bases, I'm interested in seeing whether Iran will continue proliferating, whether the U.S. has indeed, as some officials have said, uh, re-established deterrence with Iran, and if not, then to what degree will Iran continue proliferating? What the U.S. could do is shift focus and try to limit the influence of these militias that are active in Iraq. 2019 was a really big turning point for me to see the Air Force debut their computer language initiative, and then to see that picked up through congressional action and actually make it through the process. The big thing will be to now see, does the department and do the services actually deliver on that? I'm really looking forward to work coming up at CSIS to explore some of those pathways and options. Well, now that the Space Force has stood up, it's about making sure that they stand up an agile, lean organization. It's all about implementation. One of the key things I'll be looking for for the next few years is making sure that the space components of all the military services actually transition into the Space Force. The last thing we want to do uh, is actually end up creating a more fractured situation. So we got to make sure that all of these space uh, units and space organizations and the personnel that go with them transfer into the Space Force over the next few years.